I'm really pleased to have two visitors with us here today. Both of these gentlemen are subject matter experts in the field of enterprise mobile computing, and between them, they've got nearly 50 years worth of experience. Introducing Joe White and Tom McNeela. So Joe, with all your experience, can you talk me through the warehouse and its changes that's happened over the past 20 years? First, let me level set with 50 years experience. I assume he's got 40, I've got 10. If that makes you feel more comfortable, <laughs> that that's not feel a better. Um, no, fundamentally, um, the warehouse environment is what really built our business and started this industry of enterprise rugged mobile computing. And it was really built around how do we drive productivity gains into the use cases of inventory operations in a warehouse. And if you think back 20 years ago, devices like the PDT, which I'm holding in my hand here, really created that industry and really made the industry what it is today. Um, you know, we refer to this device often as a brick on a stick. And it was really designed around how do I do the repetitive operations of inventory scanning through that warehouse. Uh, both the applications as well as the device were all optimized on delivering productivity gains in that space. So you've been working on how to change the warehouse environment to drive more efficiencies. So what have you been working on? Yeah, so sure. Um, we, uh, we really set out to look at how do we build the next generation of our warehouse devices? And really the leading device in the market today, the MC9000 that is out there, we were looking at, you know, how do we evolve the device? Where do we take it to next? And one of the things that we saw while working with our customers in their operations and really watching how those users use the device, um, we saw a great opportunity to reimagine that platform and how it operates into a form factor like the TC8000 that we have today. So truly reimagining how that, that warehouse worker operates, how they do their job, how they do it more efficiently, and that's what we've done here. So have you just been concentrating on the hardware of a new mobile computing form factor, or have you been adding in extra software things to drive that productivity? Oh, that's a great point, David. The, uh, certainly, you know, just changing the device itself is not sufficient. Um, if you look at the workers, the one thing that has changed over the last 20 years is the warehouse worker themselves has changed. How, they, how familiar they are with operating a mobile computer or a device. You know, today's worker is used to having a smartphone in their pocket. They're used to all touch. And we fundamentally had to look at how do we take that green screen terminal emulation application that resides in 60% of our devices in the warehouse today, how do we actually move that into a modern all-touch experience? And that's where we exclusively created the all-touch TE software application that complements the device. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's go talk about the device itself. And Tom, the first thing that I see is that it's a totally different form factor than what Joe had been talking about with our traditional gun base. So talk me through that form factor. Correct. So as, as stated, we've, we're moving from the gun form factor into TC8000, and it was driven by a desire and need for, to drive more productivity out of the operations. And what we noticed was this tilt and verify, tilt and verify of the previous configurations. With the TC8000, the plane of the scan engine is the same as how you interface with the device. So as you scan the product, you're getting information about that scan, whether it's a good scan, an exception you need to take a step, or the information about your next step while the device is in a single position, therefore eliminating this small but meaningful movement throughout the day. And in some shifts, there are hundreds of scans per day. In many shifts, there are thousands of scans per day. So that, over time, adds up for a single user, and that clearly adds up over time for all users across the enterprise. So that element alone drives productivity because the user is more efficient. Additionally, the form factor is more efficient to use and hold from a human factors perspective. The battery is in the handle, the center of gravity is closer to your hand, so therefore there's less fatigue on the user as they work their way through today using a TC8000 versus other form factors. Less fatigue, 
more efficient activities drive productivity. Other elements of productivity, let's say the device is due for a battery change. Um, other products um, might require you to take a couple of motions. This is as simple as taking it out and putting a new one in. And as you notice, we don't lose the state of the application, the data, but more importantly and different, we don't lose connectivity to the network. So within a mere three or four seconds, that user has more power, new power, to continue the operation. So just on that topic of power, the form factor has got smaller, it's got lighter. Surely the device itself can't last as long as, as a traditional brick form factor in a uh, shift. Great challenging question. In reality, the CC8000 has the largest battery in our portfolio. That, in combination with the efficient use of the platform, allows for two to three shift utilization on a single charge. And we've seen that not just in simulation, we've seen that through our beta trials and our customer trials. Fantastic. So, talking of those customer trials, are you getting any really good feedback from the customers that are using the device already? Yeah, from a user perspective, we have seen users ask to keep the device after the beta trial or after their shift. We have seen users try to keep the device as well. In other words, they're putting it where they hope to find it next. Um, another example is we went into an operation, presented a user who hadn't been exposed to the TC8000 prior, uh, explained it within a few minutes, um, and for the next two hours, he went and performed his daily operation. At the end of that, he came back and said, it worked great, easy to use, very comfortable, and again, asked to keep the device. That's a brilliant accolade um, for the product. Now again, as I'm looking at the product and from observing, there are no keys on it at all. And I think there's 50 odd keys on a traditional um, form factor. So a couple of questions for you. First of all, how do people manage without all those keys? Because surely they needed those keys beforehand. And secondly, is it going to drive any form of additional benefits by not having keys? Sure. So you're right, there's not physical keys. Uh, previous devices have 52 individual keys. That way you can enter the field you need. In reality, the TC8000 has 52 keys as well, but they're, they're virtual keys. And more importantly is their custom keypads can be presented to the user. So in the event they're going through a pick and they need to enter how many devices, how many packages they're picking, only zero through nine will be presented. Number one, it goes back to efficiency. I, I'm only presented the keys that are relevant. And number two, um, quality, there's no risk of me entering a wrong alpha key because it's not presented. You can see on a, on a traditional device, it's, you know, 52 keys is a lot of keys laid out on a keypad like this. So you can imagine the operation is really kind of a hunt and peck, you know, as you kind of go through your operations. So being presented, the only keys that matter makes a big difference. And it makes a big difference for users that have been in the organization for a while because they're just more productive by definition, but it also is very relevant as new users are introduced to the organization, whether that's through growth or peak populations as well. Because now they're not learning to hunt and peck through the 52, they're really just identifying, okay, which are the, key, which are the relevant keys that are presented to me do I need to enter? Additionally, I'll go back to the form factor, we no longer have the keypad. That means we no longer have the physical space, weight, volume of the keypad. And that drives a TC8000 that is 30% plus less in weight than the MT9000 family. That is brilliant. So Joe, can you talk me through the accessory ecosystem? Obviously the ecosystem of accessories is one of the most important things that customers look for when choosing a device. Sure, and probably a good analogy to start from is we all travel quite a bit, I, I know I do. 52 weeks out of the year, but you know, when you walk through the airport, it wasn't long ago that uh, everybody had luggage over their shoulder. They carried their luggage. Uh, and then somebody came up with the idea, a brilliant idea, I might add, uh, to put wheels on suitcases. And man, did that make traveling much easier than it is today. Um, we kind of, you know, liken that to what we've done to the TC8000. Um, if you look at multimodal as a topic, you know, often it gets uh, diluted, meaning a device could be designed to be a general generic device across many use cases and not be very good at any one. What we paid particular uh, focus on on the design of this product is 
how do we serve the use cases across warehouse operations and do it in a way where we're not diluting the value of what that device does as a purpose-built task worker device, right? Um, and so we've accessorized it with accessories, shoulder straps, presentation mode. You can imagine this device here, very difficult to holster or carry around all day long, whereas this device holsters very nicely. Um, the way we've built the scan engine with presentation mode, Tom highlighted early, the ability to actually just present to it um, the packages and not even be able to hold the, you know, hands-free operations. Uh, so we've optimized around that. We've also optimized around voice-directed picking, another productivity gain in the warehouse. You know, how do I deliver a very compelling, easy to use voice-directed picking uh, solution? So we've really addressed it from all angles on the device, and I don't think we've diluted the value in any one of those use cases. As Joe mentioned earlier, with regards to the younger workforces now using touch uh, mobile phones, that, I assume, makes a huge benefit um, for maybe holiday workforces. For example, I think um, Amazon recently in the US stated they're going to employ about 100,000 holiday workers just to deal with the, uh, the Christmas period. So do we can see that this is going to drive more productivity because of it? Yeah, great point. So there's, we talked about the productivity of the user once they've come up the learning curve. What you brought up is the learning curve itself. As the TC8000 has a modern OS and a large touch display, as workers' consumer devices, they're familiar with it, they're comfortable with it, it's intuitive to them. So when, when we introduce a TC8000 to their work domain, this is not something foreign, and we have found that users come up that learning curve significantly faster with an all-touch device versus previous configurations. Joe, what other environments do you see the TC8000 being successful in? Yeah, of course, the, um, it, it certainly goes way beyond the warehouse environment. We talk about it a lot because it's a significant market and where these devices are often used. But if you think about it, manufacturing is a prime use case for this device. Uh, manufacturing operations often have similar use case needs. Think about it, you manufacture a product, you gotta stage it on a dock and you gotta ship it. Um, so this device really works well in that use case. Another use case that's a large use case is uh, uh, around retail inventory operations. Retailers every year go through cycle counting on an annualized basis. And that's a big part of their inventory operations. Um, all the productivity gains, the 15 to 20% improvements that we're talking about on this device obviously apply to those use cases as well. Yeah, brilliant. So the environments you're talking about here are not ones which they generally look after the mobile computers. <laughs> uh, they can be brutal at times uh, with mobile computers, and I've heard horror stories over the years. But Tom, can you talk me through how the TC8000 is going to survive in those extreme environments? Indeed. So we've learned a lot through our previous portfolio, MC9000, MC3000. We've taken that institutional knowledge and applied it to the TC8000. So although it looks different, uh, it will not perform differently. So we have similar environmental, if not greater, requirements in performance in terms of drop, tumble, shock, vibration, ESD. Um, so we've gone through this in terms of our beta testing, we've gone through this in terms of our development testing to, to, to ensure that if we introduce this as a warehouse or manufacturing shop floor product, it's going to perform. Um, and we're comfortable that the TC8000 will be uh, very relevant in those use cases. Fantastic. So if, uh, in a warehouse environment, if people use it as a ping pong bat to have a okay. game of uh, ping pong, then we can see it and working through those environments quite happily. Unfortunately, they're the sort of environments and fun things that people get up to with our devices in downtime. Yeah, there's, there's one thing that hasn't changed in two decades is users abuse our devices, uh, and these are built to last, and TC8000 is no different.